All right, all my calorie-killing monsters out there that approach each workout with the sole purpose of slaying every calorie that they can find, this message is 100% for you. If you got out of bed today and you said, I am going to have a great workout because I am going to burn 800 calories, or you validate each one of your workouts by the number of calories that you burn, we need to talk. And I say that partially tongue-in-cheek, but mostly because when you try to chase calories and you try to get the most amount of calories, you end up burning more carbohydrate during your workout than you do fat. Now, number one answer right here is, well, I don't eat a lot of carbs, so I can't be burning carbohydrates during my workout. Well, unfortunately, in your body, you have the ability to store up to 2,000 calories in carbohydrates. Now, of course, if you're a larger person, maybe you store more. If you're a smaller person, maybe you store less. But you can store quite a bit in your liver and in your muscles. Now, what does that translate to? An average marathoner can actually burn carbohydrates for the duration of the marathon. Most marathoners are gonna burn 2,000 calories throughout the marathon. So 26.1 miles worth work, and you're still burning carbohydrates. I'm not saying that is happening to you, but I'm saying the quest for conquering calories is leading you to be stuck because high heart rate means high carbohydrate burn. And I know you said you don't need a lot of carbs, but your body has the ability to go through what's called gluconeogenesis. It can turn proteins, it can turn fats into sugars, which means you may not be consuming them, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Now, there's a lot of other variables that go into this, and I'm not gonna dive into it, but when we quest to storm the castle of the calories and take it back from the horrible fat monster that lives inside of the basement, what ends up inevitably happening is we get our wheels stuck in the mud and we're storming and storming and storming and nothing happens, the body doesn't change. But then we see somebody who decided, I wanna run a marathon, or I wanna do a triathlon, or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that. And we start to see their body change, and they're doing the same type of work that we're doing. The reason for that is they usually have a little bit more structure, which means they have higher intensity days, they have lower intensity days. High intensity, high sugar burn. Low intensity, low sugar burn. So when you see somebody, and you may know somebody like this, Somebody you know goes over and does cardio, and somebody you know goes over and lifts weights. The person who lifts weights usually sees results faster than the person who does cardio. There's a bunch of different reasons for this, but one of the biggest reasons is their heart rate doesn't spend a lot of time elevating. Now, when the two get together at the end of the workout and they compare notes, the one who went and did cardio is gonna be like, oh, I had a great workout, you had a crappy workout, I burned 600 calories. The one who went to lift weights is gonna go, yeah, but I lost three pant sizes. Hmm. So what we need to do is look at more than just the calories burned during a workout. The calories burned during a workout is more or less irrelevant. The quality of work done during a workout, the structure of the work done during a workout is the most relevant thing that we can establish. If you are training and you're following a structure and you have a goal that is not just fat loss, you will see success faster. It's inevitable. If you are just doing calories or doing workouts to burn calories, you will not see that same success. What will happen over time, if you are on the constant quest to murder all the calories, you will see your body stay the same, but you'll also notice a hard and fast fluctuation between weight and body fat. So if you're doing a lot of high intensity work, your body will deplete the carbohydrates that are in the muscle. I know, you're not eating them. And then your body weight will come down. And then as soon as you have water, electrolytes, and carbohydrates, and they go back into your system, your body weight will go right back up. It's one of the most frustrating things that happens to people who do a lot of distance work or do a lot of cardio. They'll see their weight trend down all week because their body's burning through all that glycogen that they're stored up and all the glucose stored in their liver. And then we get to the end of the week, we're like, yes, we lost five pounds. We show up on Monday, we step on the scale, and we're up 10 pounds. Well, it's not because you really gained that much weight. That's a story for another video. But for the most part, stop equating your calories to the effectiveness of your workout. 